Let's talk about sunscreen. And I think this is the most important video you'll ever see on the topic of sunscreen. Now, first of all, in America, almost all the sunscreens have a chemical called oxybenzone. I know it's annoying, it's a big chemical term, but that's just the way it is. It's illegal in a lot of countries, but here it's crazy how frequent it is. If you go to Walmart and you look at the sunscreens, oxybenzone, 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 you'll just find it over and over. Um, you can find sunscreens without oxybenzone, for example, zinc sunscreens, which I recommend, but most of them have oxybenzone. Check the ingredients. And also it's very important for you to realize oxybenzone and benzophenone number three are synonyms. It's the same thing. Oxybenzone, benzophenone three. This is important because if we're going to understand the studies and the scientific research on what's going on with sunscreen in terms of your health and whether we should avoid it or not, or at least look for expensive alternatives, whether it's worth spending all that extra money on alternatives. You have to know these terms. Oxybenzone, it's the same as benzophenone 3, which comes up at the end of this discussion when we start talking about cancer. It's kind of interesting. But let's look at the research. So when I published my book, Estrogeneration, um, I did a lot of digging into sunscreen and the problems with oxybenzone because it acts like estrogen in your body. It disrupts hormones in your body. I might do a different video on that in terms of testosterone, but for now, just realize I did a lot of digging. And after I published my book, they finally did a study on how much gets into your system because I didn't have that study at the time when I published. But now we have a study and the news, the media picked up on this study. It was actually a clinical trial on sunscreen. They did one application of sunscreen and the blood levels of oxybenzone were crazy high, exceeded the government's own safety limits. And this is like cancer causing limits, which are extremely high. By the way, the former FDA chairman had to come in and make a statement on this. Of course, the current one can't because there's too much money in politics, but the former one said, sunscreens have not been subjected to standard drug safety testing. How stupid is that? Despite decades of widespread use. So one application of sunscreen exceeded blood levels of those safety limits seven days later the safety limit was 0 0.5 nanograms per milliliter and even seven days later people still had 20 nanograms per milliliter of oxybenzone in their blood extremely high extremely problematic and even cnn picked up on this so that tells you how bad it really is because they're making a lot of <laughs> they get a lot of kickback money from these advertisers behind the scenes um, and it's even worse because it's in a lot of clothing. In fact, companies brag about it in the laundry detergent, for example. They talk about UV brighteners and how they protect your clothing from damage. It's in a lot of shampoo. They talk about protecting your hair against UV damage. So you see these things not only in sunscreen, but in other sources that are getting through your skin um, and disrupting your hormones. And again, hormone disruption is almost a completely separate topic, but these things act like estrogen, so of course they're gonna screw up your hormones. And not only that, in animal studies we find it increases cancer. It increases breast cancer. So the idea is you're putting on sunscreen to protect yourself from cancer, and then you're increasing the risk of cancer. That's a disaster, that's not worth it. Sure, it might take 20 years, it might take a long time, so you can't prove it with a scientific study in some cases unless you did these expensive studies, which nobody's going to do. So just be very cautious with oxybenzone. And what's really interesting when you dig into the scientific research, if you search oxybenzone, you'll find a lot of negative studies about sunscreen. But then when they talk about cancer and do a lot of research about problematic health effects, they'll call it benzophenone 3. So it's kind of confusing because they use these terms separately even though they're interchangeable terms. It means the exact same thing. Oftentimes when researchers are talking about these nasty health impacts, they call it benzophenone 3. So just be aware of that if you do any digging. Um, but realize you've got to be careful with sunscreen. And sunshine, by the way, in moderate amounts, has amazing beneficial effects. Watch my video on that. I'm not, I'm not just talking about vitamin D. I talk about detoxing, how it breaks down toxins in your skin. I talk about your metabolism. I talk about bilirubin and breaking down bilirubin. What does that mean and why that's important? So a lot of benefits from sunshine. Get out in the sunshine. Sure, don't get burned. Wear a sun shirt, wear a sun hat, use zinc sunscreen if you have to. 
definitely avoid oxybenzone.